So welcome to part one of uh, talking about Reason's new RV7000 MK2 Advanced Reverb, which they introduced in Reason 8.3. So let's go ahead and just jump into this. We're going to overview some of the basic settings and get, getting finding your way around the uh, reverb, as well as just a brief talk about what is convolution reverb. So let's bring up an RV. We'll go to effects down here and I'll just drag that. And uh, that will then put it on the master section of the mixer as an send effect. So if I F5, scroll up, you see we have all plate spread in the effects return section. You can click on the edit and that will take you there to what we just uh, brought into the rack. I'll F6 and maximize the rack. So uh, the RV7000 has uh, 10 different reverb and echo al algorithms. The new version in Reason 8.3 now has a zero latency convolution algorithm, so you can load impulse responses. You can also sample your own impulse responses, which I think is awesome. So if you're new to convolution reverb, what is an impulse response? Well, if you were to set up a mic in a large room or cathedral, what have you, and you start recording and say clap your hands or hit a snare drum and record that for a few seconds after the clap or snare drum, uh, the, the actual hand clap, the snare drum, is the impulse. The seconds, the few seconds, of recording after that initial transient or impulse uh, is the response. You're capturing the response of the space that you're in. So you're capturing the reverberations and, you know, this is just a, it's an oversimplification, but that's in a nutshell what convolution reverb is. So the, the impulse response is actually a sound file that you load into a reverb device that processes these uh, impulse responses, these audio recordings. So you have to have a convolution engine in order to process those, and that's what's been introduced with the new RV7000. Now you still have the same presets that was in other, the older version of the 7000. Uh, along with this, you can also download impulse responses from Reason's website. So if if you go to their homepage here, and let's just do a search for RV7000. The second one here, you see patches. And they're available for free, so you just select buy. You'll have to log into your account, and then you can download them and place them wherever you'd like to put them. Also, you can do a search free impulse responses, if I can type. And then you can just scroll down and take a look at other sites. There are a lot of places out there where you can download these uh, impulse responses to your computer and then use them, add them to your library. And again, you can record your own. And to do that, you would just click on this arrow here to open the remote programmer. You've got the sample button, which function, functions just the same as if you were using Kong or uh, Red Drum. Uh, you just click and you start recording and stop when you're finished. There is a 12 second limitation on the recording, so anything beyond that will be truncated. Uh, you can also just click and hold and release whenever you're finished. So I don't have a, an interface or mic set up on this computer, on this laptop, so I can't give you an example of that, but in the future I will. So I'm going to close the remote programmer here, and 
I've already downloaded the impulse responses from Reason's site, and I just have, in my browser, I have a folder that I've already created where I store my my sounds and samples. As you can see here, I've got a folder. So I'll go to my Reason Refills and Patches, uh, RV7000, Impulse. Now here is are the patches. So if I double click there, we've got convolution reverb patches. And so this is where you would then load your patches. And I'm not sure if I can drag this there. I can. So we now have an impulse response loaded. And I will Let's just give that as a quick sample. So I'll just load up a grand piano. Let's go to the mixer and turn that send on to go to the RV7000. Go back to the rack, turn the wet dry mix down a bit, bring up my on-screen keys by hitting F4. Okay, let's try another one here. What about Colossal? Do one more. I lied, one more. I kind of would like one that's a bit more pronounced. Let's try the film score. Okay, so those are the patches. Now, I'll F4 and close out the on-screen keys. If I were to create an audio track, and we'll go step up one, and see, this is the folder that has the actual impulse responses. So I will F7 and bring up the sequencer. This is the audio track that I've just created. Let's open up the impulse responses. I just would like to show you. So th these are actual waves. So just as if you're recording your own, you're recording a wave file to use as the impulse. And it has the response included with it that the convolution engine in the RV7000 will use to uh, recreate that space to any instrument uh, that you're using. You know, it's we're, it's using these WAV files. So if I drag that in, and let's hit H and zoom out. See, this is the actual file. That's a really short one. Let's see if we can have something else here. St. Andrew's Church. Hmm. 
I'm going to hit G and just shrink that in a bit. Zoom in. Okay, so you can actually hear that, how the space is recorded there. So that's the impulse response, and I hope that this gives you a better idea of what actually is going on underneath the hood and how, how this works. So I'll delete this out. Let's go back to our rack. And I'm going to clean some of this up a bit. So of course, as with any other device in Reason, you do your browsing here. Uh, you want to be sure that that has the orange highlight. So then this matches the orange up here. And you know that you are browsing for the RV7000. You uh, have an indicator here where you're at. You can step down using the arrows. You can also uh, use the arrow keys on your keyboard. When you are browsing patches, note that the patches in the browser do have a certain prefix in front to let you know what sort of patch it is. So the all is a more general sort of reverb. A and B, that's ambient. Cab is for cabinet. DRM is drum. And then you've got effects. So just know that you can, you know, echo, a more echo sort of reverb. Spring reverb. And these are for uh, vocals, Fox. Just know that when you are browsing the patches, you do, you can refer to the prefix as to give you an idea as to what sort of uh, reverb patch that you're choosing. As with any other device, you have bypass on and off, your level indicator for the input. Now here you have a couple of buttons for enabling EQ and or for gate. You have uh, these broader controls for decay, damp, and high EQ, and then your dry wet mix. Now to access uh, to more control of the settings, you just click the down arrow as we just did. And here you can adjust these knobs to control different parameters of what you're working on, of the particular uh, reverb type that you're working on. See, right now we're the top one switches through the different types. So we're on algorithm convolution. That's reverse, echo. So you're switching the algorithms for the RV7000 and how it will process which type of reverb it will use to process your audio or instrument. And I'll go over these in greater detail in part two. So just know that you have more control with these knobs depending on what you're actually using. Now this, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, there the RV7000 does come with an EQ. So you need, to, in order to enable that, you would need to click this button here. To access the controls for the EQ, you want to click this LED here. And then you have access there, just as the other screen we were just in, you have controls that you can then adjust, the, the frequency that you're working with. And again, I'll go over these in more detail in part two. And we'll disable that. Let's turn the gate on. In order to access the gate controls, you would click this LED. And then again, you can control the various parameters with these knobs on either side. And you can also toggle between those by clicking the edit mode button here. So when you're working with the RV7000, it is a true stereo reverb processor, unless you're working with the convolution reverb. That's mono. But if we flip this around, the rack around, by hitting tab, you can see 
that you have stereo inputs. And so you're working in stereo when you are using the regular reverb algorithms and stereo out there. Now you can put in a mono signal and come out stereo. So that is an option. And I'm, I'm going to hit K. Well, I'll select that. I'm trying to hide these cables. You can adjust, by hitting K, you can hide cables, but there are three different settings in your preferences that will determine what's hidden. I don't have hide all cables when you hit K selected, so that's why they're not all going away, but um, uh, that's a little bit better. So, and here you have control voltage inputs where you can adjust, you know, adjust certain parameters with uh, control voltage. And again, we'll cover that in the more in-depth part two. And flipping back around, I'm going to turn that K back off. So uh, I think that I'll just leave it there for our introduction video, part one. Hopefully that gives you a brief idea of finding your way around and what convolution reverb actually is. Uh, the color here has changed a little bit for the RV. It's now blue instead of that purple. So I think we'll stop here. Thanks for watching.